Fleet Moss has become a favourite haunt of mine. I was shown it not long after I moved up here and it really stuck with me. It's one of those wild windswept places where you really feel like you can just, uh, I don't know, get some perspective, let things blow through because it definitely is windy up there. Apparently the name is from Old Norse, Fjord Moss, which means roughly boggy stream. Well, you can thank the Vikings for giving it an accurate name because the top of this hill is indeed covered in peat. The road is about 1900 feet above sea level, which is a full 1000 feet higher than where I live. There I was, bags packed, all ready to go and help out at Scargill for the week and suddenly got these images sent to me by one of the community there. And looking at the flooding and the trees that were down and the 80 mile an hour winds, it became obvious that I probably wouldn't get through. So unfortunately I had to cancel that one. I'd come to Yorkshire expecting there would be occasional disruption due to snow. But what I hadn't bargained for was the whole of Wensleydale turning into an impromptu Lido. As I implied earlier, we're nearly 900 feet above sea level where I live, so when the snow happened, we were actually forecast sleet. But what we ended up with was probably about six inches of snow, albeit short-lived. Well, it's coming up to the end of February and I'm once again back at Scargill. Uh, we have a half-term week of quite a full programme actually for the kids and the adults. Um, the speaker is Dave Hopwood, my old school friend. So I often try and come here when he's there so we can meet up and just go out for a meal or something like that. I think I've probably said before that this chapel is really a favourite space of mine. I absolutely love this room. One thing I can't actually uh, depict here is how it smells and it's kind of like um, sort of as you'd expect but not quite so churchy, it's sort of wood, wax and if you want alliteration, welcome. Um, it's just a lovely, lovely place. I've always, always liked it in here. Wormholes are a popular construct of mainstream science fiction. So much so that if you go to the pictures to see a science fiction flick, there's a very high probability that you'll come across this trope. What you don't expect is to come across one in your friendly neighborhood Christian conference center. Nevertheless, as you approach the event horizon just outside the guest tea and coffee station known as the Beehive, you will always encounter the sound of footsteps coming over that bridge. It can't be spontaneous generation, so there must be something else in play. Maybe they're coming from somewhere in North Devon. Most odd. When I was at school, a caretaker was generally a grumpy retiree with a flat cap, an ultra-wide broom, and occasionally a bucket of sawdust. But at Scargill, caretaking means serving hot chocolate last thing at night, helping lay tables during the day, and going around last thing and first thing, locking up and unlocking. It's an enjoyable role to perform, and it has its own rewards at the end of the day, such as this Olympic-sized bath. You may remember me saying that last year the Marsh Lounge was undergoing a complete refurbishment involving, amongst other things, dismantling of its Grade 2 listed roof. Well, I just happened to be caretaking at Scargill the day the new lounge was unveiled. Gone are the troublesome pillars that seemed always to be in the way. New parquet flooring has been laid. New double glazed windows put in throughout. The room's been extended at the back, making it much bigger. New dimmable LED lighting has been added, which uses a lot less juice. And there's a whole raft of state-of-the-art AV equipment been installed. So it's pretty much new everything. 
the community, the contractors, and everybody involved has done an absolutely splendid job with this room. And that more or less brings an end to phase seven of Scargill's ambitious extension and renovation program. If you drive up onto Fleet Moss and just keep going, eventually you'll reach Wharfdale, which is where Scargill's located. On your way through though, you'll pass by Deepdale, which is this lovely spot. Right after my February stint at Scargill, my youngest son Ben popped up for a couple of days' visit. Naturally, I was eager to show him my favourite local beauty spot, but unfortunately the weather that day wasn't particularly nice. You could still see for miles, but the wind was bitterly cold. Just a few days after Ben went home, I was minding my own business watching the TV and happened to glance at my phone. I noticed that the magnetic field values had spiked strongly into the red and that the forecast likelihood of an aurora was extremely high. I hastily grabbed my things together, jumped in the car and went down the road to find a nice spot. Now there are various apps that you can use to try and predict when an aurora may happen, but the best one I've found so far is the Glendale service. It's not available through the App Store or anywhere like that, you have to go onto the website itself and install it on your phone, but I'll put a link in the description. I had a gap of about 10 days from the end of one stint at Scargill and the beginning of the next and in the interim I used the time to catch up on some work, moved on towards completion of my latest piece of music and generally just enjoyed the lengthening evenings at the end of winter. It's fairly common at Scargill for there to be more than one group in at the same time, and that's the situation we had at the beginning of March. This week we had two completely different groups in. The first was just over a dozen ladies who'd come along to do lace making and general handicrafts, and the larger group of about 30 or so people had come along to hear singer-songwriter Rob Halligan. Both Dave Hopwood and Rob Halligan appear fairly regularly at Scargill, so if you'd like to learn more, check out the Scargill website or Dave or Rob's individual ones. Not long after I returned home, I noticed strange goings-on in the kitchen. My suspicions were finally confirmed one night when I came downstairs and saw a little agouti-coloured figure scuttling along the worktop and disappearing down behind the central heating boiler. I was quite relieved when I found out it was actually a field mouse because that made me feel better about releasing her in the wild. Day 7 is the name of my new piece of music, and as we speak I'm just getting ready to put it out there. I've been working on it for quite a few weeks actually, because there were a few things I wanted to incorporate into it which were difficult to learn but very rewarding in the end. You'll be able to hear it soon on my other YouTube channel, John Della, so I hope you'll enjoy it. Well, that's the end of the video, and I'm sitting outside telling you this at 7 o'clock in the evening because we've had another power cut. So that's probably it until about 4am. Hope you enjoyed it, and see you next time.